Hello and welcome back to part 2 of our Titanic interior tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a really nice easy video. All we're going to be doing is bringing the bulkheads up to the right height and then filling them in. That's all that we're going to be doing in this part so it's a nice easy one. There's nothing difficult about this one, it's just uh, time consuming more than anything. But it's a necessary part and well, once we've got this bit done we can start filling the rooms in. Uh, part 3 is going to be a little difficult, so just prepare yourself for that. So bulkhead B will be going up to D deck. And when I tell you which deck that it's going up to, what you want to be doing is, is stopping it a block below that deck. Like we did with the first bulkhead. So what you want to be doing is, is stopping building when you get to the one block below D deck. I've already marked it out on this one. So these ones are nice and straightforward compared to that first bulkhead. I hope you followed the first part okay. Um, what we're going to be trying to do is get a, a few videos in front before the first one even goes on YouTube. Um, these, The first one and this one was pre-recorded and then I'm doing the voiceover afterwards. Um, but from part three onwards I think I'm going to try and do it live. Um, because like I said, part three is going to be a little complicated. Uh, we're going to be doing the fireman's passage in part three. Uh, that involves doing a double spiral staircase. We actually showed that in the showcase video. Um, when I was heading down towards the boiler rooms and stuff like that, I head down towards a spiral staircase and that's what we're going to be building in part three. Um, so I really could do with doing that live rather than, rather than doing the voiceover afterwards. So we're not going to fill them in just yet. I mean, I don't know. If you want to fill them in uh, before moving on to the next one, it's up to you. Um, I'm just going to fill them in afterwards. Um, so we're just going to move on to bulkhead C. Now for this bulkhead, um, I don't know why my notes said uh, E deck. Uh, because we actually marked it out with a, a block on this bit at D deck. But for some reason I took it out. Um, that's because my notes were wrong at the time and it said E deck so I thought we just marked it wrong but it turns out this bulkhead does actually go up to D deck so even though at this point in the video I only take it up to E deck just take it all the way up to D deck because I do come back later in the video and change that bit anyway it's just that my notes were wrong at the time until Will later on in the video points it out as you can see it is one deck below where it should be so just save yourself some time and just take it all the way up to D deck. So after we've done this bulkhead the next six bulkheads yep the next six bulkheads do only go up to E deck. Um, I'd I think originally they were all supposed to go up to D deck but um, the design got changed at some point because uh, Bruce Ismay wanted the grand staircase to be grander um, so I think that's why they, they changed the heights of like the middle bulkheads. It does get you thinking a little bit maybe if those bulkheads were one deck higher it might have given the ship a bit longer float time. It might have lasted long enough for the Carpathia to get there. It might have saved more lives. Who knows? Like I said, uh, you don't have to fill these in at this point, but it's entirely up to you if you just want to get that bit done instead of doing them all in one go. So a bulkhead D does only go up to E deck. Hopefully at some point we will have Will <laughs> in one or two of these videos. Uh, it's just a little difficult because like I said before we are at least an hour apart um, and he can't always be over this way but he is actually over here today at some point so maybe we could start part three with him. It would be nice to have him in at least a couple of the videos. Um, he actually did really well when it came to designing this, the interior for Rich LaRusse's Titanic. 
followed the schematics really well. Um, I didn't actually start following them till I think C deck, D deck or C deck. I can't remember which one it was. Um, so all these bottom sections really it was Will that followed the schematics for it and we managed to get it built and I've got to say I was quite impressed um, because I mean it's called Newbie for a reason because he's not really much of a gamer um, but with all the lockdowns and stuff happening because of Covid-19 you know we were bored and stuff like that and uh, I managed to talk him into getting a PS4 and so we went on Minecraft and he wanted to do the interior for Titanic and here we are. So I'm moving on to the next bulkhead now, which is bulkhead E. That also goes up to E deck. I think the next four bulkheads as well go up to E deck as well. It's only the last, the last five bulkheads that start going back up to D deck. So what we've done so far is bulkhead A at the front, which is the peak tank that goes up to D deck. Then bulkhead B goes up to D deck as well. Bulkhead C goes up to D deck. And then this one is up to E deck. Just in case my uh, babbling has caused any confusion and you like, can't remember which deck these go up to. Just trying to fill the videos in with a bit of conversation, really, because these these ones are so simple. I don't really have to do much talking, because um, all I have to do really is explain which depths that they go up to. I don't really want to be skipping things either. Like, I mean, I don't want to be telling you which deck these go up to and then skipping through building it and going to the next one. Um, because I, I hate it when I'm following tutorials and people do all sorts of skips and stuff like that and it's like I want to actually walk people through this I don't want to be skipping much um, apart from if something's going to take a long time to fill in So this is bulkhead F and it's going up to E deck. So this is going to be for boiler room three. And Will's arrived earlier than I expected him to. I have. Uh, thank you very much, Pips. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job, by the way. Thank you for bigging me up earlier on. Uh, I had a good listen to that just before you're we welcome. came on air. <laughs> uh, so I just uh, I hope everyone's doing really well and I hope that you're following uh, Pipkin's instructions well. Um, and like I said, remember to leave some comments if you need any advice or tips or if you do have any suggestions for us. Because like I say, Pipkin said we're, new we're newbies. Well, I'm a newbie. She's not. She's a complete geek. Um, <laughs> sorry, Pips. Thanks, Will. <laughs> <laughs> so just remember to leave us any comments. If, if there's anything that you think that we could do differently, then we'll definitely take your feedback 100%. Just remember, try and keep your comments as positive as possible. We will take your criticism, but like I say, we are we are newbies to this and it took us a long time to get all this together. Pipkin's going to take over now and just give you the next directions for the next bulkhead. Yep. So this is bulkhead G and that's just going to be going up to E deck as well. So you can see on all the sounds that we put on, Pipkin did in that last video, um, the areas that we're actually doing the bulkheads for now are the boiler rooms. The boiler rooms were really, really tricky to try and work out the placements from. And what we did, we used a side angle um, on one of the um, internet search engines. We just searched for the schematics and we got some side view pictures. And that's how we determined how we would put the boiler rooms in the different areas. The, we used actually used the chimneys uh, on the side and that's because that's how all the soot and all the smoke went out the Titanic, of course, so, and that's how we did that. So the boiler rooms are actually really one of my favourite areas. A lot of the favourite areas around the ship, Pips, I think, is all under the waterline, what do you think? Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Especially that uh, reciprocated engine room. I would just we'll have really to say that. that. <laughs> <won't we? laughs> yeah, the engine reciprocated room probably will be a really large challenge, but we will get it. We'll we'll take you through it bit by bit. 
onto pips again so she can get you through next bulkhead. So the next one is H, and that is also going up to E deck again. Yeah, so as we're saying, yeah, the engine reciprocating room, we're actually coming up to that in a second because you'll notice on the schematics that there is quite a large block difference. Um, I think it's like a 38 gap block between the, the next bulkheads, the K and L, I think it is. And between K and L, that's where your engine reciprocator sits, and that's like full height right up to E deck. Um, that took us such a long time to plan, but once we've now we've got it built and everything, and everything's in place, it won't take not not long at all really to get it together in video for you and you'll be building it in no time i can honestly say that you will be impressed with the reciprocating engine like when pipkin did the walkthrough she showed you quite a lot of it but actually building it you'll see every little detail of mm. it uh, pips is just going to take you through j now and then i'll talk yeah so this is this is going up to e deck and this is actually the last one that goes up to e deck so this last bulkhead you're putting in, the room that's to your right now, is going to be the last boiler room. This is the smallest boiler room of them all. Um, this is only a single-ended boiler room. Um, and we're going to show you how to make that. So they're different from the double-enders. So there will be tu there's tutorials for every single boiler room. It's just that once you've built one, it, they're relatively easy, aren't they, Pips? Yeah, I think there's just one that has a slight design change. Isn't yeah. There? Like, yeah. There's a wall somewhere. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we will take you through that. We're going to take you through every single boiler room. We'll get you through it. Um, and you'll be building the Titanic in no time. So before moving on to the next bulkhead, it was at this point that uh, Will pointed out that bulkhead C was wrong. I did mention earlier in the video that I do come back to this bit to correct it. Um, that's why I said that you need to take it straight up to D deck so you didn't have to do this. So at this point in the video, I'll just, just wait until I go back to the next bulkhead that needs doing. So you can see Pipkins just raised that uh, bulkhead up now, so that's corrected. So if you rejoin in the video now after you've recorrected that, welcome. Um, so we're going to go on to the next bulkhead. Pipkins is just going to fly us down now, and we're on bulkhead. Okay. And that's just going up to D-deck. So the rest of the bulkheads now are going up to D-deck. And as said in earlier in the video, this is a reciprocating engine. This is our baby, and it's actually the heart of the ship as well. So um, this is definitely the best room other than maybe one of the... I like the dining rooms, actually. They're my next favourite after that, what do you think? Yeah, they're quite as well. I yeah. uh, quite like the turbine engine room, but that's because I pretty much designed that one, didn't I? Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, let you off. I'll let you off on a tangent with that one. I said, go on, then. <laughs> she, she can design something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's like I said earlier on in the video, at this point, you'd done most of the designing and figuring out the schematics, so I felt like... I needed to do something, you know what I mean? Well, we're saying off air just before we started recording this that I'd done quite a lot of planning um, through the first parts of these videos, uh, well, through, through the first part of us actually making it. Yep, yeah, let's just get this next bulkhead in. And then you can carry on. Sorry about bulkhead that. Bulkhead L? No, it's fine. Uh, like I said before, just going up to D deck. I got interrupted by Pipkin then. <laughs> I know, how rude of me. How dare I try to tell everyone what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so yeah, I did quite a lot of the designing, which I didn't mind doing until Pipkin decided that she wanted to try and have a turn. And you did quite well. I was really impressed, actually. You did really well to follow the schematics. Thank you. There is an area of the ship, but once we get to it, we'll tell you what Pipkin designed, because I'd gone to work all day and Pipkin had been on and she'd planned the whole floor plan out. And I was like, I couldn't believe it. it well, we're well chuffed, so mm -hmm. we will get to that at that point. I but... think it was, um, I think it was C deck. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. There were a deck, and you'd done the whole f bloody full thing. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So I was chuffed. You can see now we're getting towards the the back end of the the boat now. Well, the ship actually it's not a boat, is it? <laughs> um, Let's just see what this bulkhead is. Yeah. 
Bulkhead M, and that's uh, up to D deck again. So this is the dynamo room. This is where the um, electric dynamos were. So this is also the... This dynamo, I'm sure, actually um, controls the middle propeller, this one. Because the engine reciprocators, each side of the engine reciprocator room controls your left and right oh, yeah. propeller. And your dynamo is actually powered by a generator. So this is actually powered by electric, this one. And the other ones are powered by steam. Of course, the electric's out powered by a steam generator but this one's actually solely st uh, solely electric sorry so the steam's generated via the boilers goes through to the reciprocator and then they've got also steam coming through to the dynamo which then turns your middle propeller i remember that room being a, a bit difficult really it's because it's really it's, compact isn't it yes it's got such a small ceiling in that because mm -hmm. i think there is that uh, i think it's either storage or there's something around there we'll we'll have a look in schematics and get back to you on that actually yeah it just seems to have a really small ceiling doesn't it really long. yeah but yeah that's the room into it where um we're right to the top of the ceiling weren't we pips yeah. is just here with next bulkhead uh bulkhead n uh up to d deck again this is the propeller shaft. Now, this room is like one of the simplest rooms. When we get to this, you'll love this video because we'll probably be able to do maybe two or three sections all in one thing because literally it's exactly what it says on the tin. It's a propeller shaft. <laughs> Not much in there, is there? <laughs> no, it's just a propeller in. <laughs> <laughs> and we did some nice fancy covers to make it look like the propellers were like supported. Supported, <laughs> yeah, really. So easy peasy. There was a bulkhead P, wasn't there, but we didn't put that in. No, we didn't put that one in because that is quite close to the rudder of the ship, so mm. we'll just not put that one in. It's, it is a very small one. I mean, you, you can get... I think we might put some links in the descriptions of... Um, the schematics. Uh, of the schematics, yeah. We'll put the schematics in. And there is also the pictures that I use that help me uh, plan out the bulkheads. So we'll put that in the description as well for you, and then you can have a quick look. Yeah. Okay. So this bulkhead that we're just finishing off now is the penultimate one. So we've just got, uh, I think it's N, isn't it? Yes. Or is, are we on N? We're on N now. I think the last one's O. Apologies for that. We are on N. So we're just going to go to O. This is the last one. Pips is just going to give you directions for this one. It's just the same again. It's just up to D deck. Perfect. So this one, as you can see on that sign, is an empty area. From the schematics, we can't see that there's anything in there. And it is too low down in the belly of the ship, really, if there's anything to be in there. Um, you do see it. I think it's similar to maybe the peak tank, um, just like an empty void space, maybe for buoyancy or something like that. Uh, if anyone wants to correct us on that, be our guest, definitely. Um, we'll, we'll take that, if, if you can tell us what it is. <laughs> let us know <laughs> so we'll just finish off this um, before the video ends Pipkin's just going to go through uh, the the heights of each uh, bulkhead. bulkhead yeah she's going to go through all the heights just make sure everyone's got everything right um, just like I said just take your time with it it is a bit tedious because you're trying to get everything up but we've done as best to describe how hard how they're going and where, where they are and everything so you should be relatively fine Pipkin just wants to put that one up a bit more because she nearly made a mistake then. <laughs> <laughs> correcting it all, no. Me correcting you all the time. <laughs> How rude. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so that's it. So we're just at the end of that bulkhead there and Pipkin's just going to take over now. Yeah, I just want to go over the all the hearts just to make sure that you've got it all right. So bulkhead A is up to D deck. Bulkhead B is up to D deck as well as bulkhead C. That's up to D deck as well. Uh, from D to J is up to deck E, and then from K to O is up to D deck. So as you can see, we just flew all the way through the front end of the ship. Pipkin's just going to show you what we need to do next, which is just basically filling in all the gaps. So we want everything as a big long wall so that you can see all the bulkheads. You can see we're just filling them in. I think I do come on at this point, actually. I help her fill mm -hmm. some of in and make a few newbie mistakes, but <laughs> here we go. <laughs> so yeah we're just going to fill in this fist bulkhead for you we do do the other bulkheads off camera so make sure you do fill each bulkhead in like we are doing um, and we're just going to show you in, in a little while after after we've done this and we've cut to the next bit we're just going to put some flaws in but we'll, we'll go through that in a second so yeah make sure you fill them all in I know it's a bit tedious but I hope you followed this tutorial well and I hope that it's starting to look somewhat like bulkheads in the Titanic. It's not. It wouldn't be so bad if you had world edit. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I wish we did have world edit, but in a way, it's kind of cheating because 
That's not that. Yeah, we, we've, we've put it in block by block, so and we did say in the opening introduction that we're going to take you block by block, and this is exactly what we're doing. If you've got World Edit, fantastic, but World Edit's only going to get you so far with our design, really. There's only so much you can do. It's by, only for by your... big areas like this, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And the floors. Yeah, that's it. You can easily get World Edit for your floors, but not for all your little intricate details like all the furniture and all the engine reciprocators and all that. That's all block by block. You could make this bit a little bit quicker by drinking uh, portions of swiftness, I think they are. Yeah. So you can just see now, we're just putting in... So where your floors start from, I think that is F deck, F G. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's G deck, what we're at there now. So on both sides of your bulkheads, you want to just continue your floors so it looks like your floors around each bulkhead. You'll see it on the other side because... I'm just placing the blocks in at this moment and Pipkin's just filming me. But we are going to come round the other side and we need to do that on every single uh, bulkhead if possible. You know, realistically, you need to get that done so that it gives you a perspective of each deck. Because uh, what we're going to do in the next lot of videos is we're going to list each floor for our reference and you can see that as well. So that is pretty much it for this part. Um, like I said, part three might be uh, a little difficult to follow because we're doing the double spiral staircases. So make sure you've got a lot of patience, you're in a good mood and you've got plenty of time because that might test your patience a little bit. Um, I hope you've followed along okay and like we keep saying, don't, feel free to leave comments if you feel like things could be made easier or done a different way. Um, we're looking forward to seeing you in the next part. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.